Hello, welcome. Time again for our daily reflections. Uh, and this week, uh, our last week of daily reflections, we're making our way through the first few verses of uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 1. Uh, and the, the aim of what we're trying to do now is thinking about the, the kind of skills that we've been developing for meditating on God's word um, in larger chapters. Um, how can we use those same skills uh, looking at short verses and, and the aim really is as we get back to work get back to normal life and uh, start doing things going places if time's a little short maybe if you're on a lunch break or something how can we um how can we read a, a short passage uh, if we haven't got time to read you know enormous psalms or something if we're just going to read a, a verse or two and a brief prayer how can that be uh, of of some value and um and bring us closer to the Lord and listen to him and, and use those those the benefits of that meditating on God's word uh, and and really be blessed by that. So that's what we're about, what we're trying to do. Uh, so um, the if we come to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, uh, and as I said yesterday, we're looking really at the NLT, really uh, any translation is fine, but because they're quite different, um, in the way they organise the sentences, it makes sense just to stick to one. So we're reading the NLT because it, it's quite convenient that it uses short sentences. It chops Paul's uh, very enormous uh, sentences uh, into smaller chunks, which works really well for what we're trying to do here. Um, so uh, these, are, these are my notes, again, um, sharing with them in, in all their glory, that this really is how I would... Um, approach a, a sort of short uh, few thoughts about a, a verse or a half a verse and we're, we're only in half a verse here uh, so at the top I typically write out part of the verse not necessarily all the words but just the things that really sort of uh, stood out so uh, Paul's writing to God's holy people in Ephesus faithful followers of Christ Jesus the second half of verse one uh, so these are the notes the things that kind of came to me um, uh, and it's that idea of holiness really comes through. So only God is holy by nature. It's it's by definition that nothing can be holy apart from him. Um, if his people are holy, it's because he in his grace has made us holy. You can't you can't choose to be holy because holiness is a, an attribute of God. You're, you're choosing to be uh, like him in some way. So if you are holy, it's because he's made you holy. He alone makes someone or something holy. Okay, well, what does holy mean? Well, it has this idea of separation. So separate, separate from the world's corruption, separate from the world's corruption, and separate to God's perfection. So that the holy articles that were used in the temple um, couldn't be used for anything else. They were separate from, from, every, from the world and everything else, and they were only to be used in the temple, in the tabernacle, only for his use. So... Um, to be holy has this idea of being separate from everything that's corrupt and separate to uh, God's uh, usefulness for God. But of course, we're holy in, in the world, so it's a slightly different situation, Not we're hardly in the tabernacle. Uh, all of that is accomplished by Christ and by faith in him. You don't choose to be holy, you don't make yourself holy, he makes you holy. You, you, we're united to Jesus by faith. Um so when you put the whole of that first verse together, we're uh, uh, Paul and uh, chosen to be an apostle. We're chosen by God. We're chosen to be something. We're appointed, and so we're saved and we're sanctified. We're made holy. When we talk about sanctification, very often we say we're justified. We're, we're declared righteous, and over a period of time we become sanctified, and that's that increasing holiness in us increasing holiness of life uh, the new testament has sanctification uh, this holiness idea in two ways one you're made holy because you're united to jesus and on the other hand you're to be holy because you're united to jesus so you are you're you're you are holy in that you're connected to holiness uh, and yet that doesn't or we're not perfect we're, that's just not reflected in everything that we do in all our conduct so there is this um, uh, an increasing sanctification that goes on. But at the same time, we are sanctified. We are holy. We are united to Jesus. We are separate to him, even if we're not fully yet separate from corruption. 
So in that first verse, those four words of, of chosen, appointed, saved and sanctified sort of shapes your day. <laughs> uh, and and how we're to think about ourselves and, and what today might hold. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Um, I've said before, I, I find it helpful to, to write a, a really brief prayer. And the reason I find it helpful is it... it, it brings your, your thoughts into and prayers into a concrete set of words that you can then look back on at a, a later date. But that, that's not a secondary thing, really. Um, it's rather like writing a brief letter or, or an email or a text or something to, to God. It, it's, it is a very deliberate thing, and so you're conscious of who you're writing to. And of course, as you write, you are praying. That, that's the thing. So pray these things with me then. Holy Father, whose very nature is holy perfection and love and righteousness. Thank you for saving me in Christ. Thank you that I am united to Jesus in his death, his life, his holiness. May the Holy Spirit in me lead me in an ever more Christ-like holiness of life. That seems like a good way to start the day, doesn't it? See you tomorrow.